All right, now that you've finished the do now, completed your do now um, on your computer, uh, let's go ahead and check over our work for our do now. So looking at this, we have 32.5 minus 15. Remember that we need to line up the decimal places, so this is really like 15.0. Um, so 32.5 minus 15.0, 5 minus 0 is 5, 2 minus 5 we're going to have to borrow, that becomes 12, 12 minus 5 is 7, 2 minus 1 is 17.5. Answer choice B. Uh, coming over here to the second do now problem, we have a fraction subtraction, um, actually mixed number uh, subtraction. Um, we're going to have to get common denominators for this first. Um, so um, I'm actually going to go ahead and change the mixed numbers first. It's going to give me 23 over 5 minus, and this is going to be 6, 7 over 3. Then I'm going to get common denominators. So I'm going to multiply this one by 3 over 3. And that's going to give me 69 over 5 minus this one is times 5 over 5 is 35 over 15 as well. Um, now I can go ahead and subtract and that's going to give me 34 fifteenths which is going to simplify to 2 and 4 fifteenths. Answer choice B. Okay, coming over here. Um, now we've got some integer addition here. Um, so I'm thinking about this, just a quick sketch of like an arrow diagram here of what this would look like. I have one arrow that's leading me away and then a second arrow that's leading me away. So we can see that that gives us the idea that we're combining these two together. So 32 plus 15 is going to give me 47, 47. And as we can see, just looking at our arrow diagram, this is going to go more and more in the negative direction. So this is going to be a negative 47. And finally, we have 64 plus negative 78. Um, just doing a quick think through of the diagram over here. Um, zero being here in the middle. I'm going to have a positive 64, but then I'm going to have a negative 78. Negative 78 is going to bring me all the way back in here into the negative land. So definitely going to be looking at this. And I need, they're cutting into each other. So that's that idea of subtraction. 64 is going to give me 14. So yes, this is going to be negative 14. All right, um, let's go ahead and flip on over um, to our work for today and write down our aim. All right, today's aim, Kipsters will be able to add positive and negative rational numbers. So when we're talking about rational numbers, we're talking about anything that can be shown as a fraction um, or whole number, positive or negative, doesn't really matter. Rational numbers, uh, decimals, fractions, integers, all of these things are considered rational numbers. All right, um, so our first example here asks us to represent the sum of negative 5 eighths plus negative one-half using the arrows on the number line. Before we do that, let's go ahead and answer a couple of these questions um, down here. Um, first question says, what needs to happen to the two fractions before we can add or compare them? Go ahead and write that down now. Hopefully you wrote down that we needed to go ahead and give them common denominators. So before we can compare them, we need to give them common denominators. So that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to actually rewrite the expression with uh, common denominators. So go ahead and take a moment. Go ahead and convert these fractions so they have common denominators. And rewrite the expression with the new fractions. Hopefully you identified that the common denominator was 8, so the negative 5 eighths is going to stay the same, and the negative 1 half 
times 4 over 4 is going to give me negative 4 over 8. One thing to keep in mind when we're changing fractions that have their denominators, they're going to keep their same positive or negative um, negativity here. Um, so looking at this, we should be able to immediately know whether this answer is going to be positive or negative. Go ahead and write down why um, you would know this answer is going to be positive or negative, where it says, how do you know? All right, you should have written down that the answer here is negative. And how do I know? Uh, well, both arrows go negative. So when we put them together, we know they're going to be going that way. Now, remember when we talked about our rule back for this, we were talking about adding and subtracting the absolute values. So talking about 5 eighths and 1 half, um, or in this case, after we've rewritten it, 5 eighths and 4 eighths. Do I need to add the 5 eighths and 4 eighths or subtract the 5 eighths and 4 eighths? And how do you know? Go ahead and write that down. So hopefully you said that we were adding them. And we know that because the arrows go in the same direction. Arrows go in the same direction. Alright, so let's go up here and let's look at what our arrow diagram would look like. Um, so I've given you this number line conveniently broken into eighths. Um, so looking at this we have negative five eighths. So I'm going to be starting with our here. Negative 5 eighths, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 eighths, and an additional 4 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can see our answer here um, really quickly. If we looked at this and we thought about our rule, we would get negative 9 eighths. Here we can see we get negative 1 and an additional negative one eighth. So two different ways we can really um, think about that. Um, one is just obviously a mixed number. One of them is an improper fraction. No big deal. All right, go ahead and try this one below um, on your own. Answer all of the questions and then try and write your arrow diagram. I would suggest that you go ahead and pause the video until you're ready to move on. Okay, so what do we need to do? Uh, well, it would look to me like in order to do this, we probably need to change to improper fractions where necessary and get common denominators. All right, um, so this is going to be negative 9 eighths. And if I'm looking at this one, um, 8 is going to be my common denominator times 2 over 2. That's going to give me positive 6 eighths. So I'm going to rewrite this expression, negative 9 eighths plus 6 eighths. Um, is my answer going to be positive or negative? Um, this is definitely going to be negative. So we have opposite signs here. When we're thinking about the arrow diagram, I'm going to go ahead and draw my arrow diagram now. Negative 9 eighths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 eighths, that's greater than negative 1, or has more absolute value than negative 1, and plus 6 eighths, so back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 eighths. And we should see that that should leave me here at 3 eighths, negative 3 eighths. And so we know our answer is going to be negative because this is more negative than it is positive. More negative 
and positive. All right, are we adding or subtracting? Well, we can see our arrows cutting into each other, which should remind us that we should be subtracting because we're finding the difference between the two arrows. Arrows cut into each other. And we can see that our answer here we got on our diagram is 3 eighths. So then if we think about this, um, that's negative 9 plus 6 would give me negative 3 eighths. All right, so we can see that basically it's the exact same thing. The only difference is when we're dealing with fractions, we're paying attention to our denominators when we're adding. And as always, the denominator stays the same. So numerators add denominators stay the same. And so we just need to make sure we're paying attention to those sign rules. All right, um, let's see how this goes with decimals. Um, all right, so we've got 1.3 um, plus negative 0.5. I'm going to go ahead and draw this one on the arrow diagram. Um, so 1, as you can see this is conveniently broken into tenths, so each of these is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 2, 3. So this is 1.3. And coming back in a negative direction, it's negative 0 0.5. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And that looks like that's going to end me up here at what looks like positive 0.8. Um, is the answer negative or positive? Well, it's positive. How would I have known that even before I drew my arrow diagram? All right, so looking at these values, we were definitely more positive than negative. Um, are we adding or subtracting? So I can see my arrows cutting back across each other, so that definitely means that we're going to be subtracting. How do I know arrows? Cut into each other. So thinking about this, this is really like 1.3 minus 0.5. Take the sign that we said it's going to be positive because it's more positive than it is negative. We're going to get 0.8. Sure enough, that's what we got on our arrow diagram. Is there any difference between adding integers and adding positive and negative decimals or fractions? Explain. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so hopefully you've identified that no, there is no difference. The arrow diagrams. So work the same. However you want to describe that you knew that there was no difference is all fine by me. All right, so now we're going to try a couple of just thinking about it without the number line. Um, so looking at these two, um, I first want to identify for myself, is my answer going to be positive or negative? And am I going to be adding or subtracting the absolute values here? What do you think? All right, hopefully, you said over here, we've got a negative plus a negative. So thinking about a quick sketch of the arrow diagram, that's starting here at 0, a negative, and then another negative, continuing to take us in the negative direction. And because both of the arrows are going in the same direction, we're just going to combine them together by adding. So I need to add. 3 fourths and 2 and 3 fourths and I know that my answer is going to be negative so I'm going to go ahead and combine go ahead and make this one a 
Next number, 4 times 2 is 11, so it's negative 3 fourths plus negative 11 fourths. Again, we're just going to add the absolute values here, so 3 plus 11 is going to give me 14 fourths, which simplifies to 7 halves. That's a good enough answer for me. But, hold up, our answer is supposed to be negative because both these arrows were going in a negative direction. Always key to check that at the beginning and at the end. That's where students make the mistake in this unit. Not necessarily with not knowing what to do about the adding or subtracting, it's usually remembering to get the negative sign or leave the negative sign off at the end. Alright, so looking at our last one here, um, we have negative 2.3 plus 4.08. Is our answer going to be positive or negative? All right, the answer should be that this is going to be positive. 4.08 is worth more than 2.3, so this is going to be a positive value. Add or subtract the absolute values. You should be definitely thinking to yourself that we're going to be subtracting these. They have opposite signs. Those arrows are going to be cutting into each other. Um, so this is a subtraction situation. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that work down here. Um, 4.08, it's my larger absolute value, so that's what I've got to subtract from. 2.30. I'm going to have to borrow, 3 becomes 10. I'm going to have to borrow again, 10 becomes 9, this becomes 18. Oops, I actually didn't need to borrow there. So let's go back a little bit. This is still going to be 10. And this is going to remain 8. 8 minus 0 is 8. 10 minus 3 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 1.78. Double checking again at the end here. This is supposed to be positive, so I get this is equal to 1.78. It's positive. All right, um, let's flip on over and let's see if we can get some of this practice in on our own. I'm going to give you a couple of more instructions before I want you to work through this with your partners or by yourself. All right, carefully pay attention to the directions. Um, the on the left hand side we're just asking you to draw a quick sketch of the arrow diagram and answer the questions you don't need to solve so what I mean by a quick sketch of the arrow diagram are those quick sketches that I was drawing earlier um, here's the arrow diagram We've got a zero here on our number line so this is going to be a negative three and seven tenths plus four and four six which is going to take us back into the positive so I know that my answer is going to be positive see the arrows cutting into each other so I know that means that I'm going to subtract that's what you want to do on the left hand side over here on the right hand side just want you to find the value of each expression so this is where you're, you're actually going to do the work um, remember to be thinking about whether your answer is going to be positive or negative if it's more negative or more positive and whether the arrows are pointing in the same direction so you need to add or in the opposite direction so you need to subtract. Alright, go ahead and pause the video now. Go ahead and get as much of this work done as you can. Um, if you need support, you'll need to start the video just long enough to get you started on the problem. Alright, so looking here at this first one, I have an arrow diagram zero in the middle, this is a positive two, but we have a negative three and four fifths coming back across it. The negative three and four fifths is going to take us into the land of negative for our answer, and because they're cutting across from each other, I'm going to subtract these values. All right, so looking at the next one, uh, this one I've got to be a little bit more careful um, or not really because I guess they're both in the negative direction so when I'm drawing my diagram it's going to be one arrow this way and then another arrow adding on to it that way that means my answer is going to end up in the negatives 
And because the arrows are going in the same direction, I'm just going to be combining them by adding. All right. Looking at this, looking at my arrow diagram, I start with 3 and 1 eighth. And I'm going to come back negative 2 and 4 fifths. So it's not going to be quite enough to get me back. So I'm going to stay in the land of positive. This is more positive than it is negative. And I'm going to have arrows cutting across each other. So we're cutting into each other. So we're subtracting. All right, looking at this one, quick sketch of the arrow diagram. Okay positive 42.3 we have a negative 32 that's again not going to quite bring us back so we're going to stay positive here and the arrows are cutting into each other so I'm going to need to subtract All right, looking at the last couple here Ooh, this one's a simple integer one 62 forward 53 back, that's not enough, so we'll stay negative. And cutting into each other, subtract. Arrow diagram, both are negative, so we've got two arrows pointing in the negative direction, which means we're definitely going to add negative. There's nothing to take us back to positive, and we are going to be combining these values since the arrows are going in the same direction. And the last one, here we have a positive 6.2. We have 5.3. Doesn't get us back, so we're going to stay positive here. But the arrows are cutting into each other, so we're going to subtract. All right, moving over here. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and answer these questions. Um, Pause the video if you need to um, to finish that first. So looking at these, just quickly thinking about the arrow diagram here. These are negative and a negative. So I'm going to be combining my absolute values. I need to get them to have common denominators first. So I'm going to multiply this one by 4 over 4. And that's going to give me 24 over 28. That's negative. This one times 6 over 6, that's going to give me 18 over, nope, sorry, 7 over 7. It's going to give me 21 over 28. And again, they were both negative, so they're both going in the same direction. I'm going to combine these. This is going to give me 42 over 28, but it's going to be negative because we can see that these remain in the negative direction. Simplify it, negative 21 over 14. It simplifies even further, taking negative 3 over 2. All right, looking at the next one, quick think through of my arrow diagram. Got positive four and four fifths and negative three and seven tenths. It's not going to make it back. The answer is zero is going to be positive. Arrows are cutting into each other, so I'm going to need to subtract. Um, I need to subtract the larger value, so this is going to be the one that I'm subtracting from, and that's going to be change to an improper fraction is going to be twenty-four fifths, and this one is going to be negative thirty-seven. Tenths. Need to give them a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this one over 2 over 2. Negative 37 tenths plus 48 tenths. So again, subtracting 48 minus 37, that's going to give me 11. We're more positive than we are negative, so this is going to be 11 tenths in the positive direction. And the last two with the decimals. Again, looking here at our arrow diagram. Quick sketch, forward, or backward, backward. These are both negative values. means we're going to be combining them. 5.14 5 plus 4.50. We're going to be adding them because the arrows are going in the same direction. 4, 6, 9. Um, so we're going to get 
positive or negative? Um, both my arrows are going negative, so negative 9.64. And finally, uh, we have two arrows, one starting us off in the negative direction and coming back towards it, so we're cutting into each other. We're going to be subtracting 15.3 minus 6.3. It's going to give me 9.0, and I am more negative, so my answer is going to be negative. All right, that's it. Um, so our focus here is really thinking about two things. Same thing that we've been thinking about with the integers. Um, am I more negative or more positive? That's going to determine whether my answer is negative or positive. And are my arrows cutting into each other or working with each other? And that's going to be the difference between adding and subtracting. All right, um, you should be able to now handle this all on your own. All fractions, decimals, um, whole numbers, integers, all of these things that you can add up.